All right, so this next video is one that I've been putting off for a while simply because I know those of you watching this may not be going through the best stage in your life. This video is about what you should do or the options that might be available to you if you are going through foreclosure. Now, I wanna be transparent and share with you that this actually hits home for me because in 2008, 2009, I personally was in foreclosure. I remember the stress that it had on me, my wife, uh, we had young children at the time, so I can relate and I know exactly what you are going through. So if you are going through foreclosure or think that you might be going into foreclosure soon, then this video is for you. I do want to let you know that this information is specific to Pennsylvania simply because foreclosure laws vary from state to state. So if you are in foreclosure, a few things that you need to know and First and foremost, this is more of a mindset thing and I want you to keep in mind that the bank does not want your property. Although you may get on the phone uh, with them or receive the letters that can be threatening and somewhat of a punch in the gut, I want for you to keep in mind that the, at the end of the day, the bank does not want your property. It will cost them more to foreclose on the property than it would be for them to exercise several options with you. So keep that in mind. Next, this is relatively important and you need to find out if you are in foreclosure or if you are in pre-foreclosure because there's a pretty significant difference. In the state of Pennsylvania, if you are in pre-foreclosure or lis pendis, what this means is that the servicer has issued a notice to you stating that you, the borrower, are delinquent on your promise to pay and that if you do not start making payments, they will foreclose on the home, okay? This is the first notice that, hey, you're in trouble, you're not making your payments, and if not, we're gonna take legal action, okay? But if you are in foreclosure, that means you've already been served those notices, and the servicer has now started to exercise their legal right to attempt to foreclose on the property to secure their debt. All right, so you have to understand the difference between the two because how you maneuver through those two uh, and the amount of time that you may have available to you is significantly different. All right, so now that you've established that, you need to identify ultimately, how did you get here? What is it that happened that has brought you to this situation? Because that's gonna then determine whether or not you are facing a short-term hardship or a long-term hardship. Let's say for example, you lost your job or you had a pay cut, but now you are back employed or you have found a way to either cut expenses or make more money, right? That would be a short-term hardship. Let's say you broke your leg and you couldn't work. Again, short-term hardship. You do have the ability to get back on track and make payments. Now let's flip the script and assume that you are ill to a point where you can no longer work again. You have an injury uh, that has re resulted in you no longer being able to return to the workforce. Or you have a deceased uh, spouse who was also contributing to the household expenses. Those are long-term hardships, things that cannot be fixed, okay? If you have a short-term hardship, right, you have the ability to pay again, then there's several things that you can consider. Uh, you can consider a loan modification. Now, usually when you do a loan modification, your servicer is gonna put you on a temporary uh, payment trial period, whatever you wanna refer to it as, if that even made sense, where you're going to make a few payments in good faith. You're gonna be showing the servicer, hey, I'm telling you I can pay, here's money, I can make the payments. They're going to give you a predetermined amount so you know what it is. And of course that is to be due on the first of the month. And once you show that you can make those payments on time, the servicer will then say, okay, you've shown us, you've checked that box. We're gonna modify the loan. We're gonna make it so that it's current. Here's the new payment amount. And now you're gonna have a new maturity date. A maturity date is the date in which the loan is paid off. So when you modify it, you very well may have a new maturity date, okay? Another thing that could be an option to you is a forbearance. Now a forbearance is very similar 
to a loan modification, but instead of going through some of that middle legwork where they're having you make trial payments and they're reviewing your financial documents and all these other things, forbearance, although they're gonna review your documents to make sure you do have the ability to pay, they're going to take the delinquent amount. Let's just say you're behind $10,000 in late fees and possibly legal fees. They're gonna take that $10,000 and they're gonna just attach it to the end of the loan. So in this situation, your payment is gonna remain the same, but the difference is your maturity date changes because they're taking that dollar amount and adding it to the end of the loan, meaning you're gonna owe them longer <laughs> and theoretically um, more if they're baking those legal fees in, but if forbearance could be an option for you. Another option could be to just sell the home. That's the one key thing that I think is, is significantly different between the housing market today versus the housing market we saw 15 years ago. But if you are having a hardship, whether it be short-term or long-term, you do have the ability to sell the property if you have equity. Now, here's the thing. If you're not paying your mortgage and legal fees start to accrue, your equity will diminish like that. And before you know it, you actually won't be in a situation where you can do a traditional sale, where you can sell the property, take the equity, put that money in your pocket, and um, get your life back on track relatively quickly. Now, if you have a long-term hardship, this is where things just get different and you don't have as many options because at the end of the day, when you borrow money, you are also promising to repay that debt. So if you do have a long-term hardship, uh, again, a disability, a death in the family, or, or a death of a spouse that was a contributor to those bills, anything along those lines, then you wouldn't be able to request a loan modification or forbearance unless you were able to show that you had another way of paying that loan. You also could consider selling the property, again, uh, assuming that this is 2023, uh, 2024, and you have that equity, you can go ahead and sell that property, take the equity and move on. Or if you don't have equity because you have a hardship and you don't have the ability to pay for the property, you could do what's referred to as a short sale where you, you sell the property to someone for less than you owe, or you can do uh, a deed in lieu, which is when you give the property back to the servicer and then they release you from that debt. Now, if you're an investor, some of these things may not apply and there is some gray areas when it comes to doing a forbearance, but theoretically that's how it works. You're giving the property back to the servicer to settle that debt. Now, if you need to stay in that property, you know, you have a child that you, you want them to finish going to school in that property, or you just need another year or two to get your, your, your feet on the ground, consider selling the property to an investor, someone who would actually rent the property back to you. There are lots of investors out there looking for deals, and if they can get a deal and not have to improve the property and you're going to pay them rent on the property just so that you can stay there, that's an option for you. So keep that in mind if you find yourself in a position where you want to stay but can't stay, that is one option for you. And the other thing that might apply, whether it be short term or long term, um, you're really going to determine the scenario, is you might be able to look into governmental assistance or grants. There are grants out there for people who are behind on their mortgage. Uh, there's grants out there for people who are behind on their utilities. So looking at grants or governmental assistance could be another way for you to dig yourself out of this messy situation. So if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to contact me below in this video uh, description. There is a link to my foreclosure guide if you are in foreclosure. Again, this guide may just help you better understand and navigate the waters that you're in. Uh, and as usual, thank you for tuning back in to Just a Tip with Chris. Uh, I mean it, if there's anything that I can ever do to help you, let me know. Feel free to drop a comment or reach out directly. And with that said, happy holidays, and I hope you are well.